few projects we have that are energy related. One of them that's closely related to dielectrophoresis is, um, I said if you change the electric field, if you change the frequency that which that electric field is applied, you probe different parts of the cell. So there's a lot of research these days into designing organisms such as algae, which will accumulate lipids or effectively precursors to biodiesel inside their bodies. And so we're devising methods of using higher frequency of the electric fields in order to sort microorganisms that are effectively producing oil. And this is interesting because there's a lot of work going on in genetic engineering and synthetic biology in order to engineer these small organisms that will accumulate more and more of these oils. The problem is there aren't very low cost or fast ways of determining which cell has the most oil. And so our microfluidic and dielectrophoretic techniques that we're working on will allow us to sort these cells by their oil content. Um, you can think of it as we're looking for the fat cells. So they're making fat, and so we want the fattest cells, but we're allowed to find these fat or high, high oil producing cells using this non-invasive technique. So once we're done, the cells will still be alive and we can um, harvest them for further testing or for, uh, for additional uh, cultivation. Another thing we work on is microbial fuel cells, which are very interesting uh, devices. So a fuel cell in general, so anytime you hear the name fuel cell, it's a device that will take a fuel and an oxidant and give you useful energy, waste heat, and byproducts such as water or potentially carbon dioxide. So a microbial fuel cell is interesting in that, as opposed to using a precious metal catalyst, which is typically used in a fuel cell, like in a chemical fuel cell that people have promoted for automobiles, these microbial fuel cells use bacteria. So they're bacteria that will actually live on an electrode <coughs> and respire or effectively eat the fuel. So they eat this fuel that allows them to live, but as a byproduct of their, um, of their respiration, they release electrons to an electrode. These electrons have a certain amount of energy that you can harvest as electricity. And so, as opposed, imagine you, it's effectively you take a system and you swap out a precious metal such as platinum for bacteria. And these bacteria will live on this electrode. Now, there's some benefits of this. They're very efficient eaters. And so, they're very good at processing all the fuel. You could potentially use them in wastewater treatment facilities. So. It's estimated that um, the, ener the energetic content of wastewater is about 10 times the amount of energy it takes to process it. And we spend, in the US, roughly 3% of our energy on wastewater treatment. So if you could get 100% efficiency, which you never would, but if you could get 100% efficiency, basically 30% of, of the energy required in the US is in wastewater. So if you get just some fraction of that back, you could offset the at least the amount of energy it takes to to process wastewater, much less, you know, potentially sell some back to the grid. And so these microbial fuel cells are being developed as a way of harvesting some of this energy from wastewater, which is currently, um, for lack of a better term, flushed down the toilet. <laughs> so one of the things that we do, um, we, you know, looking at, we were interested in things on the micro scale. And so a lot of implementations of microbial fuel cells have looked at designing bulk or larger scale systems. But in our opinion, you have these cells that are on the order of one micron in size. So they're very small. And so the environment that they experience is very small. So if you want to understand how the flow of reactants and the flow of electrons and, um, and geometry of a system affect these cells, you need to be able to probe an environment which is closer to, to their scale, which is on the order of a micron. And so we develop these microfluidic microbial fuel cells that allow us to run very controlled experiments and understand a little bit more detail about how the local environment in a system affects the ability for these cells to, to transform uh, organic uh, materials, sugars, acetate into electrical energy. So some of the problems we're working on related to are related to fluid flow. So these systems, there's a bit of a disconnect in that most, not all, but a lot of the work that's done on these systems is done by people with, uh, with a biology background. And so most of the emphasis has been on the specific organisms that are doing this res respiration or this energy conversion from chemical energy to electrical energy. But now as we're starting to think about practical devices, you need to understand things like fluid mechanics and materials and transport. And so it's becoming more and more of a coupled engineering problem, a coupling between the biology 
and the physical mechanisms that you need to get these fuels in and out um, efficiently. And so that's really where we step in. We're kind of a link between, uh, we like to think we're a link between um, the kind of fundamental biology or microbiology that's needed in order to um, allow these organisms to live and thrive on an electrode, but then the engineering scale up that's going to be needed in order to design systems. If you're talking about wastewater treatment, that's a huge problem. That's a huge, the scale of wastewater treatment facilities is huge. And so you need to understand how transport and scale up, how those things will affect the very local biology that's actually doing all these processes.